The sun has risen, and today I'm going to be bringing you some comparisons of the 1700X to my 5820K overclocked in both synthetics and gaming. Now, to start off, I just want to say that these benchmarks are all over the place, and I tested the 1700X in a couple different configurations depending on what test was being ran just to see if it improved or decreased performance at all. And I also just want to note that I did run some tests with SMT disabled, and um, you'll see a little bit later on, but that did improve performance generally. However, I ran into massive stability issues with my system when I did that. Not only was my system unable to boot some of the times, but it also suffered from random restarts, and I even had to lower the GPU clock for that. Now, all of these tests were ran um, with the processor overclocked to 3.98 gigahertz and the RAM running at 3200 megahertz. You can go ahead and check out my other video on my channel showing um, the timings and more specifics on RAM if you're interested in that. Other than that though, the GPU was running at 15,035 megahertz and that is my GeForce GTX 980 Ti. Um, with the SMT disabled, I had to lower that to about 15 at 25 and lower the memory about 50 megahertz, which isn't a whole lot. And even then, I still did see some performance gains, even though I was running at a lower clock speed. So, with that being said, SMT, disabling SMT was just a nightmare. And then when I went to go re-enable SMT afterwards, even though I had it activated in the BIOS, in Windows it was still reporting as 8 cores, 8 threads. So I don't know what was going on there. I didn't want to re-enable. I had to reset the BIOS and manually reset everything to a hard shutdown. And then it finally started working again. Um, I don't really know what the issue was there, but system stability as a whole just went away when I disabled SMT. So the first benchmark that I'm going to start out with now is Geekbench 4. In single core performance, it lost out to my 5828K, which was overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz. Now, I do want to say that this wasn't quite an apples to apples comparison. Um, this was my personal system, the 5820K, and when I moved to Ryzen, I wanted to upgrade the system. And so beforehand, I was only running 2400 megahertz of 8 gigabyte DDR4 and dual channel mode. So it's not quite an apples to apples comparison. But you'll see that even in like gaming benchmarks, it didn't really make a huge difference. So in single core Geekbench 4, Ryzen manages to stay pretty close for most of the benchmarks, but the 5820K definitely has a lead. Now if I was able to get the 1700X up to say 4.3 GHz, which based on what I've seen is not possible, then it would probably match or surpass the 5820K in almost all of these benchmarks. Now moving on to multi-core, here we see the 1700X sort of pull away from the 5820K. There are a couple of things like histogram equalization that the 5820K does win in, but um, there's others such as rigid body physics where the 1700X just blows the Intel CPU right out of the water. Now, the next benchmark that I ran was Cinebench, and no surprise here, the 1700X won by a landslide. It was about 33% faster than the 5820K, and that's to be expected. I mean, four more cores, four, no, I'm sorry, two more cores, four more threads. Uh, it performed really well here. Multi-threaded performance isn't really an issue. We know the 1700X and the Ryzen chips in general do very well in these synthetics. So moving on now we have 3D Mark Fire Strike and then I'm going to go ahead and hop into uh, some of the games after uh, I also do Time Spy as well, just throwing in a little bit of DX12 in there. So Fire Strike at 1080p. The Ryzen chip managed to basically match the 5820K in the graphics tests and it blew past it in physics, which is to be expected. However, in the combined test, even with SMT disabled, it was destroyed by the 5820K. Now, I'm not sure what was causing this, and like I said, even disabling SMT actually 
it, it gave me lower performance than with SMT enabled. So I don't know why the combined test was so low with the Ryzen chip. Moving on to 4K though, I didn't bother disabling SMT because the Ryzen chip was extremely competitive at 4K, mainly because the bottleneck has now moved on to the GPU. Now I mainly game at 4K, so um, the gaming performance of Ryzen isn't that big of an issue for me because basically any modern CPU will suffice at 4K because the GPU is usually the bottleneck there. And as we can see, the Ryzen actually outperformed very marginally, I would say within margin of error, the 5820K. And once again, it still blew it away in physics. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and test some DirectX 12 and I ran at Time Spy. Now here, the 1700X beat the 5820K in all of the runs with the 980i overclocked to the same settings, but there was no combined test and that's mainly why I was interested in seeing. So this benchmark isn't as relevant as I would like it to have been. Okay, now the moment we've all been waiting for, the gaming benchmarks. The first game I tested was Rise of the Tomb Raider at 1080p. And I also decided to test this in DirectX 12 just to see if that would improve performance on the 1700X or not, and it didn't. So the fastest score was the 5820K um, by about 4 FPS, a little bit less. Um, and then next up we have the 1700X with SMT disabled. Here you can see where the SMT, disabling SMT actually gives you a performance advantage. And then lowest on the list is actually the 1700X with SMT enabled and in DirectX 12 mode. It, this by far did the worst. Um, it could also have to do with the graphics card. The 980 Ti does prefer DirectX 11, although I saw a bigger drop off here than I did when I was running my 5820K in DirectX 12, which um, that's interesting, but I don't want to comment too much about on that. Um, yeah, so disabling SMT here gave a little bit of a performance boost. All right, next up we have Metro 2033 at 4K. This is an older game and I expect it to rely heavily on single thread performance. And even at 4K, we do see a slight advantage for the 5820K. Now I wanna say that these max graphs here were pulled directly from the benchmark results. That's why I tested these games because I own them and they had built-in benchmarks, so it was rather easy to run. And these other results gave me, I ran the test several times and every time the Ryzen chips would, or the Ryzen chip I should say, would shoot almost to 400 FPS, whether SMT was enabled or not, so I just went ahead and used those numbers, but they're really not that representative of any actual performance. So here we see that the 5820K actually has a pretty significant lead, especially considering the resolution. Now, disabling SMT did give me about two more frames per second, but it's not significant enough. Even still, the 980 Ti had, or not the 980 Ti, sorry, the 5820K had a 7 FPS lead over the 1700X. Now, I think this benchmark is the most significant because even at 4K, we are seeing a performance loss. And here it's significant enough that it can make a difference. 53 is going to play out a lot smoother than 46 in theory. Um, because most likely in the actual game we're going to see more dips. And if you look at the minimum, you can see that. The 5820K had a minimum of 15, whereas the Ryzen, even with um, SMT disabled, we were dipping down to about 10. So, I don't know what's going on here. I'm guessing it's just a heavily single-threaded game. But, um, just moving on now, we have... Tomb Raider 2013 at 1080p. Here, once I disabled SMT, the Ryzen uh, virtually matched the 5820K. It was very close overall, and actually the minimum was better on the 1700X with SMT disabled. So, once again, we're seeing that disabling SMT gives better performance, and the here I would say the 1700X is comparable to the 5820K. 
But it should be noted also that this 5820K was clocked at 4.4 gigahertz, which was um, fairly conservative, especially when you consider how hard the Ryzen chip in my system is being pushed. The 5820K I could have got to 4.6, and I did run it at 4.6 at times, but for daily use I left it at 4.4. So there was still some on tap performance in the 5820K, whereas the Ryzen chip, I physically cannot go any higher unless I improve my power distribution or, or, or uh, put a better cooler on. And I might be doing that a little bit later on just to uh, kind of see what happens. And I also might be posting some benchmarks with some cores disabled to see if I can reach a higher frequency. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. I think a better cooler is probably a priority because right now it's running pretty hot um, but the last test I ran was Bioshock Infinite at 4k here the Ryzen chip the 1700x was actually faster than the 5820k so I didn't run it in any other configuration I didn't bother disabling SMT or um, doing anything special uh, it, it won out so this is uh, pretty good I guess and honestly I'd I don't know what to make of these benchmarks, but people who are really disappointed about the gaming performance in this, I, I would say they shouldn't be. You, like, I knew what I was going into when I bought this chip, and I'll talk about a little bit more about this in some other videos, but if you're gaming, you don't go out and buy a 6950X or something like that. The 7700K is ideal for gaming, and I didn't expect the 1700X to be able to outperform some of these chips. Now that being said, yes, you, there is an argument to be made here that the 5820K was on the X99 platform and similar to the 1700X, um, it is kind of like a enthusiast grade, production grade processor, but it has less cores and in the end the multi-thread performance on the 1700X is clearly better. The 1700X is a great CPU for production with gaming um, bearing second in mind or coming second in mind and if you game at higher resolutions I still think it's absolutely fine. However, if you're going for lower resolutions and high frame rates, then the 7700K is probably where you want to go. I wouldn't even get a 5820K for that. But um, I think it did pretty well considering, and you have to remember that as of right now, nothing is optimized for the Ryzen architecture. It's brand new. Um, AMD did uh, talk about this a little bit. And I think that gaming performance will improve, especially as games leverage not only the extra cores, but as they begin to optimize for the Ryzen architecture. And AMD's already announced partnerships with uh, like Bethesda, and they're working with other game developers to implement optimizations for Ryzen in their code. So um, those are the benchmarks that I have for you today. And if there's anything else you guys want me to try out, let me know down in the comments, and I might take a look into it. Like I said, I do plan on running or making a video, probably, of uh, overclocking the 1700X with some cores disabled. I honestly don't know if that's going to make a difference. Honestly, it might make things worse, because like I said, even just disabling SMT, for whatever reason, made my system extremely unstable. So, that about wraps things up, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.